One of the most incredible stories in Formula 1 over the past 10 years is Braun GP in 2009. But how did they win that championship? It's an incredible story from where Honda pulled out of Formula 1 at the end of 2008 to where that same team went on just 12 months later to win the world championship. But how did this happen? How did the worst team on the grid or the second to worst team on the grid go from being that slow to being the fastest? It's an incredible turn of events that led to this magnificent success. At the end of the 2008 season, Honda decided to pull out of Formula 1. Now, At the end of that 2008 season, they had a remarkably unsuccessful season, finishing 9th place in the championship, only ahead of Force India who were in their first season, and Super Aguri Honda who only did 4 races. Surprisingly, Honda did get one podium in the British Grand Prix in 2008, but that was through luck rather than judgement. Overall, they had one of their worst seasons in Formula 1 history, only amassing 14 points and having 4 points scoring occasions. Then again, back in that time in Formula 1, the top 8 was the only team to the score, so scoring was a little bit less of a novelty. Nonetheless, in December 2008, they decided to pull out of Formula 1, and there were many battles over the winter to try and keep the team afloat. There were many people trying to buy up the team, apparently Mexican billionaires were thinking about buying it, and there were loads and loads of people interested, but no deal ever went through, which unfortunately meant Honda had died. It was out of existence. It wasn't going to race in 2009. That's what everyone thought. Everyone saw what the numbers were telling them on the simulators. This car was going to be incredibly fast. Some people were saying this car was going to be two seconds a lap faster than anyone else. So to not have this car out on the track would be an absolute travesty. But thankfully, kind of out of nowhere, it happened. And Braun GP were made thanks to the hard work of Ross Braun making a deal with Honda to, to buy them out of their, their big issues and buy enough money or have enough money to race for a season, Braun GP became a thing and became a team for the 2009 Formula 1 season. So they started this season with relatively little testing. They did attend some of the Barcelona tests but had nowhere near as much experience on track as the rest of the guys on track. Now part of the reason why there was a big step between 2008 and 2009 was thanks to the regulations changes. So between 08 and 09 there was a brand new set of regulations brought in helping Braun GP evolve into a team that was right at the back of the grid in 2008 to one that could now battle for a championship if the car was there. So all the foundations were there. Honda were building a 2009 car. So a lot of things were already in the process when they decided to pull out at the end of 2008. So going into 2009, they knew their car was quick and going into testing, they saw their car was quick. But of course we know testing isn't always fully representative of how the, the teams will line up come Australia. So incredibly, they go to the first race in Australia and the car is quick and incredibly, they start one, two on the grid. It isn't the most simple race for them. They do manage to uh, do get a good result, but it wasn't probably quite as good as they would have expected. Um, they, they had a 1-2 in the end, but it wasn't quite as simple as that. Um, Jensen Button led the whole way, which was expected, but Barrichello had many issues throughout the Australian Grand Prix. So they didn't really get to show their full dominance in that race because there were lots of issues, safety cars, meaning overall the team didn't really show right then how quick they really were. We didn't see them win by 30 or so seconds, but over the coming races, we'd start to see this car was very quick. The pace was natural. This wasn't a fluke. Jensen Button would go on to dominate the first half of the season. He won the first two rounds, finished third in the third round in China, then won Bahrain, Spain, Monaco and Turkey back to back. So he won six of the first seven races of the season and this would be last of uh, Jensen Button's wins in the 2009 season. He would go on to finish the season with only two more podiums after this. Rubens Barrichello had gone to win the European Grand Prix and the Italian Grand Prix later on in the season, but where was this pace? How did Braun have such successful starts to the season? Well, it's quite interesting. As we were talking about earlier on in this video, the big regulation change between 2008 and 2009 
was kind of open. There was a loophole in the regulations which a couple of teams took advantage of and exploited. Braun, Toyota and Williams were the three teams to take advantage of this loophole and design a very special diffuser. This was called the double diffuser which essentially sucked the car to the ground and gave it way more downforce and in doing so made the car much quicker out on track. So why did this last for so long? If they had this advantage and it wasn't deemed illegal, how did they manage to hold on to it for so long? Well, the thing is with the double diffuser, it's sort of an integral part of the car. So it's not like something you can just bolt on. It's like not like a brand new front wing. You can't quickly bolt it on and everything will work. Okay, it might not completely work with the front wing, but you get the gist of it. It's not something that you can bolt on. It's an integral part of the car. So the whole car had to be, or all the rest of the cars on the grid had to be redesigned and changed to fit this double diffuser, which was not seen as illegal. So we saw one different winner in the first couple of races of the season, and that was Sebastian Vettel in the Chinese Grand Prix. But as soon as we got to the British Grand Prix, everything had started to change. Red Bull seemed to be the dominant car. They came with upgrades to their car around this time as well, with a new front wing, a new rear part of the car as well. And Red Bull in the second half of the season was definitely the car to beat. McLaren had also come from nowhere to be somewhat decent around this stage of the season as well. Lewis Hamilton winning the Hungarian Grand Prix and the Singapore Grand Prix in that season. So for the second half of the season, Braun GP only won two races as we stated earlier, Europe and Italy a couple of races apart. But Jensen Button, the eventual champion in 2009, had a bit of a dismal second after the season, or even second two-thirds of the seasons. He, he wasn't particularly good from the British Grand Prix onwards. He finished 6th, 5th, 7th, 7th, retired, then finally got another podium, the Italian Grand Prix, but then went back another three-race run of disappointing results on 5th, 8th, 5th, before finally getting a podium again in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. But by that stage, he'd already won the championship. He won the championship in Brazil after Sebastian Vettel had a slightly lacklustre race, finishing 4th place, where his teammate Mark Webber won his second race ever in Formula 1. One. But it's still surprising. How did Braun do this? Well, it was incredible because it took half a season, nearly half a season, for the rest of the teams to catch up to where Braun were at the start of the season. But then this also makes you question, why were Toyota and Williams not that good? Well, one of the simpler ways to put it is that they didn't quite have the engine behind them. So the best engine on the grid, as it normally has been over the past couple of years, was the Mercedes power units. And Mercedes powered Braun, they powered McLaren, and they also powered Force India, who also got a lucky result later on in the season. And as we've said already, Mercedes was quick. The power unit was there. They just needed the car to go along with it. And unfortunately, even though McLaren was their main team that year, Braun was the one to best use the whole rules and the engine. They packaged it together and that was the quickest car. So Mercedes had the best engine. McLaren just didn't have a very good car at the start of the season. So that's why they had their advantage mostly was because they had the engine and they had the double diffuser. Because if we look to the other teams that had the double diffuser, or the trick diffuser, Toyota finished 5th place in the Constructors' Championship and Toyota Williams, or Williams Toyota, finished 7th place in the Constructors' Championship and between them they still scored just over half the points of Braun, which is quite incredible quite incredible that those two teams which had the same idea that Braun at the start of the season were that far off because their power unit wasn't as good as the Mercedes which really helped Braun cement them as the best team on the grid especially for the first just under half of a season. So Braun essentially won the championship by designing a car so good that the second half of the season hardly mattered. They basically just needed to pick up points in the majority of the last races to win the championship. And that is what happened. Braun had had enough of an advantage up to the one just after the Turkish Grand Prix to nearly win the championship. And the fact that it took that long for the rest of the teams to develop the diffuser into a new car meant that Braun were so far ahead, they couldn't really be catched. And that's just an incredible story about Formula One, something that I don't know whether it'll ever be replicated once again. It's almost like seeing Williams suddenly go from being where they are in 2018 to being a championship winner in 2019. Of course, it won't happen because the, the rule changes aren't there to allow that to be a thing. Plus, Formula One is slightly different to where it was back then, but 
An incredible set of circumstances meant that Braun were in the position to win a championship, but it's made even better by the fact that just a few months before, a few, maybe even weeks before the start of the season, they didn't even know they were going to be racing in Formula 1, which I think makes that an even more incredible story to be telling people. I think it's an incredible and fascinating story to understand as a viewer and a fan of Formula 1, and something that surely won't really ever happen again. So, an incredible part of Formula 1 history, whether that's ever replicated again, nobody will know. But I think many people like myself who watched that 2009 season, especially as a British fan, loved seeing Ross Braun have a really good year after struggling a bit with Honda. And then also Jensen Button having the success which we all thought he could have, but then never really had the car underneath him to sort of prove it. And just overall, Barrichello winning races again, that was great to see. And just the, the feel-good story was great. And the fact that Red Bull at the time were a smaller team, they really hadn't had much success in 2000 and, uh, well, up to 2009 anyway. And the fact that they were quick as well was sort of like, wow, this is incredible. Ferrari struggled throughout that season. They only had one victory. McLaren struggled for the first half of the season. They only got two victories. Their second half of the season was good, but they only got two victories. And at the time, McLaren were the best team. I mean, going into 2009, they were the team to beat. And the fact that you know people like Toyota and BMW were beating teams like Renault, who just a few years prior were winning the championship, was also quite incredible. And the fact that Force India scored 13 points in their second season of Formula 1 was kind of helpful by a podium but nonetheless every single team scored points in this season and even though it was dominated in the first part of the season by one guy it was still a fascinating season to watch because after the Turkish Grand Prix we sort of didn't know what was going to happen after that race there wasn't a driver that went back-to-back -back victories for the rest of the season which is quite incredible and a nice statistic to see actually we kind of wish we had that unpredictability in modern day Formula 1 but that's just the way it was. Overall, incredible story about Formula 1. I'm sure you can go and see this in more detail over many articles. I think Reddit's great for stuff like this as well. People love to not even like make conspiracy theories, but just like make theories about how this happened. It's really quite incredible uh, how people think this happened, how it didn't happen. And also just people writing articles. It's a really, really intriguing story. And I think one that we'll probably never see again. It's almost like Leicester winning the, the, foot, foot, the footy, winning the, the Premier League in England in the football. It sort of just came out of absolutely nowhere. And this... Uh, you know, this guy, that the, the small team, the small guys won, which is great to see. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please let me know if there's any other sort of F1 stories that you'd like me to know or speak about in the future. I'll uh, be interested to see whether you've got any ones that are similar to this Braun GP story because I'm sure there are other ones out there that are similarly remarkable. So please remember to uh, leave a comment down below and leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you all soon. It's been Axe Mardi. Goodbye.